Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Public Coin, and today I have some new purchases to show you and talk about a couple random things. Uh, those random things, of course, will be coin related, though, don't worry. Uh, 1838, large scent, and really a lovely coin. I picked this up just because I always kind of like this style, just the way the hair flows. Really pretty strong, strong looking strike. These coins come sometimes really flat you know you see the flatness especially on those on those wreaths on the leaves on the wreath and they've got that fun centering dot there that says one cent and then now you can see of course that there is a variety of strike just even on the reverse of this coin if you look down here at six o'clock on the coin you see some really strong reading and then as you get to the north side here up around oh man that reading just disappears 9, 10, 11, 12 o'clock, completely gone. So I just want to point that out that, you know, one of the things that can make grading really difficult is if you just saw that portion there, you'd think this coin has a lot more wear to it. Which is one of the reasons why I always argue that you want to make sure that you can kind of get a sense for what the highest point on the coin is based on strike, right? So you can kind of get a feel when you look at that side, what it is. This, this coin, PCGS graded to AU50, very nice coin. Um, this coin's about uh, roughly a $200 coin, a little bit less than that. Uh, let's see if we can see some of the weakness here on this side of the coin. And you can see that the strike's a little more even. So even though on the one side it's very soft in one portion, it gets a little soft over here. But the, the reading around most of the rest of the coin is very strong. So that's a nice new coin here. Next up we have uh, an Iowa Centennial. Whoop. Let's get this in focus, shall we? Statehood Centennial. Unlike the Statehood Quarter Program, <laughs> not everyone got their own coin. Somebody had to do a good work uh, convincing other lawmakers that we need an Iowa Centennial. Just a half dollar. The old stone capital, Iowa City. Really nice looking building. I like, I like the faint clouds in the background. Kind of nice looking. Overall, uh, a pretty coin has a very nice gentle toning on the reverse. The obverse might be a little dark for a lot of people. Uh, I just like the original nature of that type of toning. Uh, it's the type of thing that you know no one's messing with the color to create toning that looks like that. Also, the Iowa has one of the more interesting looking eagles on it compared to a lot of the eagles that we see. And I'm not counting the stars there, but I'm guessing that that represents the statehood, uh, place in statehood that Iowa became a state. Uh, MS-65 by NGC, really a fun coin because it's not that expensive relative to the rest of the coin world. Uh, this is a coin that you can pick up for about a hundred bucks. So a nice looking coin, kind of fun place to start if you're thinking about putting together a commemorative set. All right, we're back to the copper. This is a smaller guy. This is a half cent from 1826 and it has a lot of very interesting, interesting attributes, shall we say. Like, first of all, it has these raised lines to the right of the six, which are pretty pronounced actually. They just kind of stick up there. So like they were trying to clean off the dye and they left these big raised lines. Half cent, United States, and it's harder to tell on a coin like this. I want to try to convey a little bit of the overall eye appeal and luster. A lot of these earlier coins get a little bit dark. So sometimes kind of a flat surface finish shows the coin fairly well. One of the difficulties with this coin is that the holder is older, but uh, the detail is superior on that strike on the hair. Uh, you can see the full rounding of the cheek. You see where the cheek t starts to tend in towards the neckline. That's just a little thing to note there because you can't always see that on a coin like this. 
and you see called this an MS63 Brown. This is this is an absolutely lovely coin. Uh, it's got great eye appeal to it. It's got a gentle tone, uh, a little bit of that chocolate brown look. And this is a guy that's about a $750 coin, so not, not uh, for the faint of heart, but for someone who's putting together a typeset, that's a really nice coin to add in for your typeset. Next up is one of my all-time favorite coins. This is one of the most popular, one of the most popular coins in the entire commemorative series, and uh, this is the the Gettysburg, uh, the Gettysburg, of course, super popular. All the the Civil War related coins got that little bit extra oomph to them for people who collect them. One of the things actually both the uh, Gettysburg and Antietam really popular coins because of the content but uh, the content aside the design on these coins uh, really one of the best and let me just talk a little bit about how there's basically an outer rim to this coin that is raised and then the inner dome where the design is placed and this is one of my favorite looking coins that, th that they've ever done. Now they keep this consistent with both sides. You see that outer rim and you've got some writing on it and then you have this inner domed design in the middle which makes it kind of pop out almost three-dimensional like and then they kind of have this combination of hiding some of the detail like the word liberty on this coin just kind of melts into the background on that dome side but then they also accentuate some of the um, some of the designed by having it uh, go from the domed area up to the rim and we'll take a closer look and I'll show you what I mean here we go again let's take a closer look here you see there's the Liberty and E Pluribus Unum which just kind of blend in there and then the outer rim you've got the United States of America blue and gray reunion on there and then the reverse though you've got the fasces on the back and just the way that these leaves on the side just kind of creep up the edges, really one of my favorite designs. Just lovely, just a touch of overlap there on the design. Uh, 75th anniversary, 1938, Battle of Gettysburg, MS-65, lovely coin, nice original white color. And uh, this guy trades for uh, about $625 or so, 600 bucks, somewhere in there. Really a nice, nice looking coin. Now next up, I wanna thank all of the uh, members here. If you don't know, we have membership levels that help support some of the things that we do. And some of that is when we play with coins, I actively seek out coins that I don't think I normally would just because I think it will make a good kind of grading experiment for the group. This is on that list, as is the next coin. And this coin, the Oregon Trail, one of my all-time favorite coins. Uh, the design is just, um, what would you say, legendary? I mean, it's just a, such a bold design. Now, the reason I purchased this coin is because NGC called it cleaned. Now, normally, you wouldn't buy clean coins, but you guys hang around with me enough to know that this is for you. So I'm going to try this coin. We're going to go ahead and end up cracking that out and sending it to uh, our good neighbors across the street there at PCGS and have them take a look. And also, I have this coin here, which we're going to take a closer look at that we're going to experiment with, thanks to our memberships. Uh, so thank you, everyone, in both the uh, questionable color and environmental damage gang because this coin has a little bit of environmental damage. It's hard to see because the, the case has a lot of environmental damage to it. So the reverse has a little bit of some funky tone to it, but you may notice, you may notice as you look at it, that it has, so that funky, funky tone is a little bit of a proof-like finish. Well, that's because this is a proof 1886 proof 63 brown and but it's got that little bit of corrosion right above the indian right there between the word states and the indian forehead 
and we're going to go ahead and get this thing conserved and see how it comes back and see if we can get any better grade on it. So that's just something that uh, we're doing for an experiment for fun. Last but not least, uh, you know, I got a collection of, of dollars in and there was not a lot of consequence in there. There were a couple better coins, just a couple in this 1921 I want to show to you. This is kind of a preview because I'm probably going to get it certified. Despite the fact that it has well, it's kind of this rim stuff going on here. You know, the rim stuff, it's, it's interesting because it doesn't look like damage per se on parts of it. Now, parts look like damage and other parts just look like they are... I don't know how to describe it, especially right here. If you look at this, that looks like it's just in the metal. Like it doesn't look like something that happened after the mint. But one of the things I wanted to show you guys on this 21 was when it goes sideways, it turns kind of um, white. And that, that white is actually a film like there. You can see that film on there. This is what happens when you have coins that have been in holders for 20 years that are not safe. So these coins all have um, 3144 address. So well, that's from 1982 to 1991. So all these coins have been in these holders, soft plastic holders for 30 years. And most of them have some type of um, residual PVC damage to them. So just a Friendly reminder that you should uh, make sure that you have archival safe materials for your coins if you're going to store them for long term because otherwise they end up needing some conservation later, shall we say. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Leave your feedback in the box. I'm Ben the Coin Geek, and we'll catch you next time.